the uh, the tail of the red dragon. That's right. Yep. So, <laughs> I just put the thing together. I don't know if it's going to happen, but that's what they're they're pointing out, you know. I, I I'd be glad to send this little bit of research that I've done to anybody that contacts me through email, and I'll put my email up here on the on the chart here. Okay. Well, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that uh, our friends, the ruling elite, by um, encouraging and and setting in motion uh, the environment to train their their, their loyal um, showbiz guy, the the ones that to do their bidding for them, right. believe that um, there is some kind of extinction event uh, that will come in the works. And we, and we know this because what they've done is when they were testing, for example, when, when, when the American army took over the Nazi special uh, technology testing and one of the things they tested was the bell-shaped um, Nazi uh, anti-gravity vehicle. Right. They... Um, use the concept of UFOs as a cover. So the whole Area 51 and South America and so on. When they were building huge underground storage in areas that they believe are the safest, such as uh, Denver, Mm -hmm. Denver Airport, they seeded all these kind of crazy stories that there are these kind of alien bases all around the world. Right. Right. Now, there may well be alien bases around the world, but uh, what a great cover for, um, for for building effectively advanced bomb shelters, yeah, extinction right. shelters. Yep. So there's no there's no doubt that in the last, well, I would say probably the last 15 years, the biggest shift is this beaver work going on in terms of um, anticipating the possibility for whatever reason that uh, the Earth might uh, face a cataclysmic event. Now, there's been other stories around where it's almost the, this justification that all these people have to go, you know, it's got to be a rebalance, all these kind of stories, which some might have felt, and I was one of them, might have been alluding to them deliberately trying to um, set up some plague or some great, uh, you know, catastrophic event. I'm now not so sure. It's more an ego anticipating some event and saying, "Well, this is you know, it's all it's all part of the grand plan." The problem in all of this, and the paradox of these people, is on the one hand, they view the heavens uh, as um, a mechanistic watch. Yeah. Right. And on the other hand, they view spiritualism and superstition as a variable force. For some reason, they refuse to put the two together. I don't know why. Maybe they think the sun's too big to have a conscience. <laughs> um, you know, we spoke about this a few weeks ago and about our conscious, our ability to consciously change things. Mm-hmm. Do you think uh, these these mm-hmm. elite... Do you think they're they're the reptilian hybrids? That's why they don't have a conscience. They 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 have they're heartless. No 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 the e- the ego is a reptilian mind virus. That's why. Oh. The the ego, which which is written into very ancient scripture as being the blindness that God gave us. Yeah, right. I, I will blind you and cause great agony and blah blah blah. Um, is a reptilian mind virus. That is, it's a it's a way of thinking that our creators gave us. But we we have um, because of the way we're structured, we cannot we cannot um, physically behave reptilian in a reptilian way. Mentally, we can think like a reptile because we're not designed to be a reptile. I mean. Our first brain, our stomach, you know, is the worm. Our second structure is the is the insect, and our third, of course, is the primate. But 
uh, it's the it's think of an ego that has reached a point where they truly believe themselves a god. They might command a whole armed force. They might control nuclear weapons. They might own banks. They might own us. They might own whatever. And their ego has reached a point where they truly believe themselves to be a living god. Unrestrained ego reaches the point of pure reptilian thinking. And that's what we're dealing with. Right. Mm. Kind of hard right, to do that too. Well, there's uh, there's there's no cure to stupidity and <laughs> great difficulty to cure people who are um, uh, suffering unrestrained mind virus like that. Right. Have you well, noticed that most of the members of your kitty are just flat busted? We're broke. Is yes. is, it a, is it a condition? <laughs> Um, no, look, I think necessity is the mother of invention. Yep. Um, really, the people that are most fearful and feel the most powerless, and this is going to sound really crazy, the people who are most fearful and therefore stay away from Eucadia are the people who have the most to lose. Mm. The people who have the most to lose up until now is anyone that has money in their system. Because they can take your money away like that. Oh, they can yeah. take it in an instant, right? Yep. They t- turn off your bank account, drain your bank account, um, slap, a, slap a foreclosure on the home, and you've basically lost millions and millions and millions of dollars in a day. And they've done it before, and they will continue to do it because it's the easiest way. Obviously, if people have money in their system, they have resources, those resources can be used against the ruling elite. And so what they do is they keep their lower minions that only have only a few 50 million, 100 million people who don't have you know, a lot compared to what they do. They basically keep them in line by showing them occasionally that one of their own goes to prison or loses everything. Mm-hmm. And so that's why. It's simple that people are fearful. Yep. Well, it's, it's what, like what the IRS does. Yeah, they'll that's they'll right. under about 400 people a year, just you know, just like sheep for the shearing, you know. Yep. Yep. That's uh, that's the way the system is. But the changes are happening at such a rate that I do believe that you'll find that uh, it is uh, coming to a point that they can't stop. I'm going to let you go, Ron, and thank hey. you for everything you're doing. I know no. everyone appreciates what you're doing, Ron. No problem. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Well, look, I think we're coming to the end um, of this uh, second hour. I know there's a few more questions in the chat. Uh, if anyone does want to um, speak, please just spell, uh, type in uh, star eight, and I look forward to speaking with you. But in the meantime, let me just see if the other questions here uh, in, the, in the chat. I see a question here from Guest29 that asked, how do we get back the energy they stole through the birth certificate, the accounts, the social security numbers? In what form? Um, the whole point of the supreme financial system is, in fact, to reclaim the energy. As far as righting wrongs are concerned, you heard that August is about redressing that and zeroing out what they've done. But as far as chasing down personal injuries that may have occurred since the time of birth, I'm a great believer that you want to avoid ever laying siege to a castle that that isn't going to necessarily render. They are not going to, we know this now, they're not going to yield on the Sesta KV trusts. Uh, We know that they're not going to yield on uh, their banks. We know they're not going to yield on any of the things that they view as key controls. Uh, So I would suggest that our greatest uh, weapon, uh, apart from knowledge and how we behave, is effectively bypassing. For example, because of fractionalization, if only 10,000 people were to withdraw their accounts from a major bank, that would cause major heartburn for most major banks in 
America, just withdraw. Go and use another bank. Don't use that bank. Go and use Acadia as a bank. Whatever you choose to do, when you withdraw your patronage, those banks have trouble. So consumption and withdrawal of consent. Knowledge and encouraging others to also stand up and stop being frightened, I think is the best way forward. Going back and trying to hold them to account, these people have proven that they are unwilling and incapable of recognising this point in history. So I don't think it's worth pursuing. But our money system is about recapturing our energy. Absolutely. Um, let me go and have a look and see other questions we've got here before we wrap up tonight. Um, uh, okay, guest 40 says... Um, Okay, I'll be asking the issue about banks regarding credit card, which has stopped paying. I've sent them many letters over the last few months. Um, I'd love to pay the debt they provided a claim. Is there any lawful money? Um, but they ignore... Okay, so they've never once replied to my questions. In fact, they've ignored and now they want me uh, to call them to discuss. Uh, my question is, how, how I can ignore this apparent compulsory call that the ombudsman says is compulsory because uh, that if I get on a call with a lawyer at the bank, so I don't feel 100% competent to contract. Uh, so I want to see, is there a way to ignore the call? Um, without us running our registers as a counterpoint, uh, without having in place the ability to um, help get people with executive control over, at this point, before it has become a court case, before it's become something that will go through the system, you're really dealing in the murky fact that you're living in a bank. Everything around your society is part of a bank. It's not part of a, a law society. You are living in a bank. You are an asset of a bank. You're owned by a bank. So in that case, uh, you're pretty much dealing with a subsidiary franchise of that bank that can, is given carte blanche to do whatever they like. And it's, it's unfair. It is um, really um, a mockery of the law. But the banks presently are pretty much able to do whatever they like and the courts will back them up every time. So the short answer is whether you go to the ombudsman or you don't go to the ombudsman. If you don't go, then they'll treat that as a sign of dishonour and accelerate the court case against you. If you do go, you'll get no relief and they'll come after you. I understand about what you say about competence, but really in the present system, the unfairness and the cruelty is you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, and uh, they simply ignore and continue to ignore. It gets a little bit different when it gets to a court case because there are things that people can do in terms of court cases and the procedure of what a court case is. But in terms of this stage with the debt that you're dealing with, with the credit card, uh, there's no simple answer. If you ignore it, they treat it as a, as a weakness and dishonour and come after you. If you do go, um, the lawyers will just uh, treat you as belligerent and ignore it. So uh, I, I, if I was in that situation even though um, you've done everything right, I would, um, I would probably go uh, and certainly I would not admit anything in that. I would certainly not sign anything in that, but I would certainly make sure they don't have the right to claim dishonour. Um, okay. What have we got here? Uh, any other questions? Let's have a look. Uh, okay. Well, look, um, here we go. Guest 29, I'm going to answer this question and then I'll wrap up tonight. Uh, Benjamin Fulford talks about the Asian Chinese secret societies vying for control in a new financial system. Can you comment on this? Yes, there is quite a bit of talk about Asian families looking to create a new commodity-based currency. And I do believe that there is some truth to this however the knowledge of money is certainly not the same as 
the knowledge that went into creating New Jerusalem and all the 